We're going to talk about syntactic obstacles to finite state machine models of human language. And in general, we're going to talk about what obstacles we might face when we're trying to model language through rules. Spoiler alert, it's recursion. Um, finite state machines cannot model recursion. And recursion is going to make it so that it's going to be impossible to build a single rule for everything. You are probably familiar with recursion from programming. For example, you can have a function that takes itself and that uses itself in the function, and then it can keep calling itself indefinitely until it finds some stop condition and then goes back up. In theory, this recursion could go on indefinitely until you provide the stopping condition. Recursion occurs in many places. It occurs in art. What you're seeing here is a can of cocoa with a lady who's holding a can of cocoa, with the same lady who's holding a can of cocoa, and so forth. This technique in art is called mise en abîme, and it's a way of showing images yeah, that zoom in and go on forever. We also have recursive structures in human language, and those are going to be a real challenge for finite state machines. So again, we're going to study what obstacles we might have when modeling human language through finite state machines and in general through any rule-based model. And in order to do that, we need to familiarize ourselves with three concepts from syntax. Relative clauses, center embedding of relative clauses, and long distance dependencies between words in human language. So human language is recursive. You can have a structure and then nest the same structure within it. For example, you can have a sentence within a sentence. We call this a relative clause, and English has relative clauses. For example, if you wanted to do the summation of these two sentences, I ate the pizza, the pizza has cheese. In English, you could say, I ate the pizza that has cheese. You're gonna have a main structure, I ate the pizza, and you're going to have a substructure, which we're going to call the relative clause. That has cheese. Notice that uh, these two sentences have an element in common, which is the pizza, which is going to appear only in one of the clauses. So in English, you have, I ate the pizza that has cheese. The second pizza is deleted. In English, we cannot say, I ate the pizza that pizza has cheese. So again, I ate the pizza as the main structure. That has cheese is a relative clause. And this is because this is a sentence within a sentence. Recursion is one of the cornerstones of human language. And there's many strategies to build relative clauses. Um, Turkish builds them differently. Some indigenous languages of the Americas, like Bri Bri, build them differently. There's many types of relative clauses, but in general, all human languages have these kinds of structures. And all human languages have recursion. This is an example from Spanish. The first sentence is, la pizza es deliciosa. Pizza is delicious. The second sentence is, la pizza tiene queso. The pizza has cheese. Same as in English. The added up structure would be la pizza que tiene queso es deliciosa. The pizza that has cheese is delicious. So you can have the main structure and then a substructure, the, rel the relative clause within it. The pizza that has cheese is delicious. And in general, you can find relative clauses in pretty much every human language. When we had our first sentence, uh, we had a relative clause at the end. In the second one in Spanish, we had a relative clause in the middle. The equivalent example in English would be, the pizza that has cheese is delicious. The pizza is delicious is the main clause. And then the relative clause is in the center. It breaks up the main clause and sets itself in the center. The pizza that has cheese is delicious. We call this kind of configuration center embedding because the relative clause is in the center of the main clause. The pizza that the pizza has cheese is delicious. 
So we have relative clauses and a particular kind of relative clause that is the center embedded. Let's put that concept aside for just a moment. In languages, we can have relationships between words that are um, right next to one another. But sometimes we can have relationships between words that are very far apart. We're going to call these relationships long distance dependencies. Let's go back to when things are uh, right next to each other. In the sentence, she talks about the environment. Uh, you have the pronoun she and then the verb talks. In English, verbs have an S when they are third person singular. She talks. Um, Rolando walks, for example. So she talks about the environment. This configuration where you have the verb plus S happens because of this word she. So you could potentially imagine that you have a state with she and then the transition says, oh, I have she, so I must go to talks with the S. And if I had I, I must go to talk without the S. So adjacent elements would tell you where to go. However, what would happen if we broke up this structure with a center embedded clause? We can have two sentences like, she talks about the environment, she is the person that I admire. If we added uh, these two sentences, you could have something like, she, the person that I admire, talks about the environment. This has a center embedded clause and a main clause. The main clause is, she talks about the environment, the, rel the embedded clause is the person that I admire. When you have this kind of configuration, you, you have a long distance dependency between she and talks. Because the third person S in talks is now uh, determined by the word she. And this word is now five words away. You have to go she, the person that I admire, talks. So the configuration of talks is not determined by the word next to it, but by some word further away. This is what we're going to call a long distance dependency. This was a long distance dependency that, was, that happened because of recursion, but these two phenomena are different and not all long distance dependencies are due to recursion. For example, we have a kind of structure called uh, tough questions or tough sentences, such, in this such as this question is tough to answer. Notice how this question has a strange uh, personality here. It is the subject of is, this question is, but it is also the object of answer. This, uh, if we spelled it out like in uh, brain uh, semantics, like in the meaning, it would be something like, this question is tough to answer this question. Somehow this, uh, the structure of this question has like two places where it should be. This is a kind of long distance relationship where this information also needs to be read at this other part of the structure, which is further away. There's a kind of long distance dependency called topicalization. So in this sentence in English, yeah, Chris, we like, you have an original sentence, which was probably, we like Chris, and then Chris is moved to the front. So like is, um, has the direct object Chris, so the thing that we want to talk about, and then this word is moved to the front. So somehow the verb must be able to read its argument, but also the argument is farther away. One example where this dependency is more visible is in this sentence in Spanish. The sentence means, the chocolates that mom brought, Maria ate them all. Los chocolates que mami trajo ayer se los comió todo Maria. The original for this sentence probably had the chocolates in the middle position. And from there, it could have, uh, it was a plural because there were many chocolates, and it matched in plural the plurality of los, which is them. However, when chocolates moved to the front, 
to be the topic of the sentence, this is the main idea we're talking about, the chocolates, it left behind the plural of them, the word los. So now the plural of los depends on some structure that you find very far away. These two are connected through a long distance dependency across all of the rest of the sentence. Finally, the examples that we had were syntactic, but you can have relationships between words that are due to context, and they can also be long distance. How about this sentence? It's not about me, I grew up in Costa Rica, but in this example, I grew up in France, and it was just an amazing childhood. We played on the street and I hung out with all the other kids, so I ended up speaking fluent, and probably you're gonna name the, you're gonna tell me the name of the language, French. How did you know? You knew because of something 28 words before. So somehow you stored information from 28 words before and used it at that point down the line. In summary, all human languages have recursion. And one type of recursive structure is a relative clause, which is a sentence within a sentence. For example, I ate the pizza that has cheese. A, uh, one kind of relative clause is a center embedded clause, one that goes in the center of a main clause. The pizza that has cheese is delicious. This is one issue that we're going to deal with. The second issue is long distance dependencies, which are relationships between words that are further apart. Some long distance relationships are due to recursivity and some are not. But in general, these two are the challenges that we're going to face when we're, uh, when we're using finite state machines to model human language.